Hey guys, what's up? It's Monkle Zonky. Welcome to a new video. In this video, we're going to be talking about the new update that came out yesterday, at the time of uploading this video anyway. And there's two things that came out with that update. First of all, there's the new death rework. We're not going to be covering that in this video, but the way that you get your items back is slightly changed. You can pay money for that. Some people love the update, some people hate it. Uh, feel free to form your own opinion. But what we're going to be talking about today is the D&D &D rework. So several D&Ds, which are distractions and diversions, and what that means is it's a mini game that you can only play a limited amount of times per day or per week or per month or whatever it is. Different D&Ds have different schedules that you can play them on. Um, but a few of them were reworked and several of them actually became quite good and quite worth your while to do. So we're going to be talking about all of the new D&Ds um, that were reworked with this update except for the Goblin Flash Mobs. Goblin Flash Mobs are now free to play and that's really all you need to know about them. But the rest of the D&Ds that were changed, we will go over one by one here and talk about what's good about them now. First up is Bork, and the Bork is a creature that you can kill once per day after completing the What Lies Below quest and after finishing the mini quest after, which is called Hunt for Surak. And you can kill Bork every day, and he's pretty decent charms if you have completed the Varrock Armor 3, so the Varrock Hard Tasks. And that was changed. It used to be Varrock Elite required for updated Bork rewards, it was now changed to only Varrock Hard. Also, the Varrock Armor 4, so if you have completed Varrock Elite, will teleport you right to Bork once per day. And you can only kill him once per day, so the one teleport per day works out perfectly. Now, this creature is not very rewarding to kill if you have not completed these Varrock Hard tasks. If you have completed them, and if you're wearing a Ring of Wealth as well, it gives a really good amount of charms. Um, unfortunately, I have not done the Varrock Hard tasks yet on this account. But I would really recommend uh, killing Bork daily, especially if you have that teleport to get directly to him with the Varrock Elite, if you have any need for charms whatsoever. Other than that, the rewards and the fight itself weren't changed, so there's not much else to discuss. Next up is the Champions Challenge, and this is a D&D that I felt needed to be updated for a long time, because the Champion Scrolls are extremely rare, but they're also not very rewarding, or they hadn't been in the past. The rewards from the Champion Scrolls were now buffed, and I couldn't tell you how good all of them are because I only have one Champion Scroll, which is the Ghoul Champion, and obviously they don't grow on trees. The Ghoul Champion is one of the lowest tier champions, and this is a fight that would have given me maybe 300 Slayer and Constitution XP, and it's now 2,000. So that's significantly better than it was, and of course the higher level champions are going to have better rewards. Also, you can now repeat the champion fights weekly, so if you have one of the better champions such as the Lesser Demon Champion that gives a lot more XP, you can do that again once per week, and you can do all of your champion fights if you wish for a pretty good amount of XP if you have multiple champions unlocked. Court cases are next up out of the D&Ds that were changed, and court cases are quite rare, so it was a bit strange how the rewards were previously quite poor, other than, I guess, the cosmetic items. If you're into that kind of thing, but now what has been changed is instead of getting um, a set reward for every single court case, what you'll get is a mystery box, and the mystery boxes can have some fairly decent rewards. Probably not going to blow you away with how good the rewards are, but I managed to get um, 30 raw sharks out of mine, which I guess isn't terrible. And also the XP now comes in the form of a lamp and not just straight up defense XP or attack XP, which you got previously. So court cases are adjusted a little bit, they're still mostly only for the trim requirement and not much else, but the rewards have slightly improved. Next up here is the D&D Evil Trees, and out of all of the distractions and diversions that were updated with this recent update, I can safely say that Evil Trees probably benefited from the buff the most. So if you don't do Evil Trees yet, you might want to seriously consider doing them if you have any need for Woodkin XP because they're really, really good for that. So I did two evil trees. First of all, I did an evil U tree on my Iron Man account. And what has changed, first of all, from the trees is the rewards have been reworked slightly. The rewards from harvesting the tree after you finish cutting down are still not that great. You get some logs, you get some bird's nest, nothing to get all that excited about. But what you really want to be doing evil trees for is the XP. 
So I did 17 minutes at the Evil Yew Tree because that's how long it stayed up and I got 33k woodcutting XP and that comes out to an hourly rate of 119k woodcutting XP which is really really good and it gets even better with the higher tier trees. There's also Evil Magic at level 75 woodcutting and Evil Elder at level 90. I was lucky enough to find an Evil Elder tree and I did this on my main account for 28 minutes. And in those 28 minutes I got 119,000 woodcutting XP and... 22,000 fire making XP, which if you factor that out to an hourly rate, that's 255k woodcutting an hour and 45k fire making, which just makes the XP rates here ridiculous. Obviously, you can't cut an evil tree for an hour straight because they only last for a max of 30 minutes, but that's the best way to compare it to other woodcutting rates. So if you're going for 120 woodcutting or 99 woodcutting or just want woodcutting XP, Definitely check out Evil Trees. They are very, very much worth your while. All right, now that I've finished gushing about the Evil Trees, the next mini game up is Familiarization. It received two relatively minor updates. First of all is it occurs every two hours now, and it's on a set timer for that. So there's no more weird times, and there's no more hopping around world after world after world to find a Familiarization that's up. Just really simple. Go there once every two hours. And also, after you complete the mini game, the triple charms that you get is in a ticket, so you can just hold on to those triple charms, and then once you're ready to use your triple charms, you can get all geared up for water fiends or whatever you want to do, bring the ticket with you, and then as soon as you're at the area and you found your correct world and all, then you can activate your triple charms. So it just saves you those couple minutes that you would have wasted of triple charms by banking or world hopping or anything like that, and it's just a slight convenience update. Other than that, the rewards haven't been buffed or anything. It's still very worth doing if you need charms, because 40 minutes of triple charms, I mean, that's really good no matter what way you spin it. And uh, the minigame itself has not changed at all. Next up is the Fish Flingers D&D, and a lot of people do this. Um, for one, it's really good fishing XP, and for two, a trimmed comp cape requirement. However, for those of you who do a lot of Fish Flingers, you'll find that eventually, after dozens and dozens of games, Tickets are no longer useful because you get tickets slower than you get the metal, so you have leftover tickets that you don't need for the tackle boxes. And also, once you buy the fisherman outfit, if you're not going for the master tackle box, tickets are essentially useless. So there's a few new rewards that you can buy. First of all, you can reset your tackle box fish teleport in. And what this is, is depending on the tier of your tackle box, you can put fish in it and then teleport a certain amount of them to the bank. It's like free porters for your fish. You can also buy Fish Flingers entry tickets for 100 each if you used up all your Fish Flingers entries and you want to continue doing it. And finally, extra fish caught with each success for 20 minutes, which uh, results in extra fish but not extra XP. So if you just want to gain extra rock tails or whatever it is that you're fishing for 20 minutes, that costs 100 Fish Flinger tokens. Next minigame up is the Phoenix Lair, and the minigame itself didn't receive any sort of major boost. The experience that you gain from completing the minigame is still unchanged. However, there were a few minor quality of life improvements. For example, using the Surge Barge and Escape abilities are now allowed, so those abilities can be kind of glitchy in instanced areas, but they now work in the Phoenix Lair. And also, you don't have this massive long delay when you're picking the twigs to uh, build the giant phoenix next nest at the end of the minigame. So, there's that. Nothing too major. But the main thing is, there's a new familiar out now. And this familiar might just be the best familiar in the game for fire making. What you do after you complete the phoenix minigame, along with getting a bunch of, like, fletching XP and crafting XP, and it's a pretty decent XP reward, is you get Phoenix Feathers, and now you can use these Phoenix Feathers to create a new Phoenix Familiar, which requires level 84 summoning, and what you can do with this Familiar is it lasts 30 minutes, and it gives you a chance to burn two logs at once when bonfiring. There is no information on the internet how often this happens, but I did about 50k fire main Fire making XP with this new familiar, which is called the Reborn Phoenix, and it looks to be around a 1 in 15 chance to burn two logs at once. So, this is obviously going to help out if you're doing a lot of bonfiring in the long run. You probably want to grab a hold of some of these Reborn Phoenix pouches, and they'll just slightly speed up the XP rate when fire making. So, a small convenience familiar, like a lot of these skilling familiars that have been coming out recently, is just something that you can have summoned while fire making for a small passive boost that will help you out. So, those familiars are always great, and it's really good to have one in the game for fire making. 
Finally, last but not least, well, maybe least, depending on how valuable you consider these rewards, is the Skelta Horror. And this is a boss fight that you can do once per week after you've completed all of the Rag and Bone Man wish lists that you can do after completing the Rag and Bone Man quest. So what is the Skelta Horror exactly? It's a boss that you can kill and it will drop an elite clue scroll every single time you kill it. So if you're into doing elites, this is a guaranteed elite at least once per week. And also it gives a pretty decent amount of XP when you kill it in both Slayer and Prayer. How much XP it gives is based on your levels and it does scale up as your prayer and slayer levels get higher and it's a 22,500 xp drop if you have 99 in both it only takes like a minute to two minutes to kill this thing so it's definitely worth doing for that xp drop if you have high levels in prayer and slayer and also it can drop triskelion fragments now and the skeleton champion scroll as well if you don't already have that all right, guys, that's all for our look at all of the new reworked D&Ds. Let me know which one you think is going to be the most useful to you. I would definitely have to say that the evil trees are probably the hypest, at least for me, because that woodcutting XP that you get from them is real good, and I'm not a huge fan of woodcutting, so I'm definitely going to be doing some of those evil trees and definitely evil elders when I get to level. But anyway, that's about all for this video. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you next time. Farewell. Farewell.